Hello and welcome here at the Automechanica at ZF Aftermarket. Good afternoon. With me on stage are Richard Achi, Head of PC Chassis Category Management, and Philip Janczewski. Welcome both. Thank you. Yeah, we are going to spend the next minutes to talk about the new automotive technologies and what they mean for the aftermarket, particularly on the chassis 2.0, which sounds interesting, right? Earlier today, we already heard of the introduction of air springs, car compressors, and CDC shock absorbers to the ZF aftermarket chassis portfolio. Philip, we can expect any further impact of the mega trend e mobility on the chassis, right? Absolutely. Until cars can fly, we will always need a chassis. We need suspension, we need a steering rack, we have to control the wheels somehow. And therefore, when we look on hybrids, electrical vehicles, what we have is that we have way more weight, so we have the battery packs. And on the other hand, we have more torque, so more power coming to the wheels. And with that, we have to deal. And the idea for a workshop to be prepared for the future is to focus exactly on these topics, to be ready and to be prepared for the future that is coming for sure. Okay, Richard, does ZF have any new chassis technologies to support the new demands of electric cars? Cars? Yeah, sure. Well, when we, when we talk about e-mobility and electric cars, uh, we all know the challenges that the vehicle manufacturers are going through at the moment to extend the range that the cars can drive on a single battery charge. Um, this is shorter that, than that of a combustion engine, so they're trying all different, different things, simply putting in larger batteries is one thing, uh, improving the aerodynamics, and reducing the ride height of the vehicle. That can reduce the uh, wind resistance as well. So that's when systems like air suspension or new technologies from ZF like uh, E-Level or S-Motion really come into play because they can actively lower the vehicle. It's also for that reason that uh, at ZF Aftermarket we've introduced a range of air springs under the Saks brand this year, and also Wabco car compressors to complement that. Very interesting, Richard. But will the mega trend of autonomous driving have any impact on the chassis setup as we know it? Yes, well, actually, more than you may, may believe. I mean, when we th talk about autonomous driving, you think of radars and cameras and all different sensors to make the car drive on its own. But the driver and the passengers won't really be able to benefit that if they have to keep fixated on the road so they don't feel sick, so they don't get car sick when going around uh, corners and so on. So it's really then when the chassis system comes into play to try and prevent these, these external factors which lead to motion sickness. Furthermore, we're going to be seeing more by-wire technology, so steer by-wire, also brake by-wire, which will really become an integral part of the vehicles moving forwards. Coming back to chassis 2.0, the future of chassis technologies. Philip, can you give us uh, some insights into this? Well, basically, we have a lot of products that are coming and which are mm -hmm. quite interesting. You already mentioned, Richard, the ride height, uh, which is can be done by an air spring, but also can be done by the system that we have here, which is called E-Level, which is basically the next level, so to say, because this is a hydraulic system and it's working in a hydraulic way and I can not only reduce the wind resistance by lowering the car, but I'm always thinking also about 4x4 four four applications where I can raise the car to have a higher ground clearance. So it is basically beneficial for all types of cars and I can always put the car back on the same level, lower it, lift it and also balance it. I mean, we all have seen the big cars coming with lots of stuff in their trunk and heavy loaded and they're lifted and on the same level. Yes, yeah, so many features out of one system, yeah. but I am sure ZF has more up their sleeve. Richard, can you give us some more insights, please? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, when we look at autonomous driving, the journey there will be much easier with S-Motion. Um, S-Motion then really combines several systems together to provide that uh, comfort that we need for, for autonomous driving. It uses a system that we call Skyhook, um, or a principle we call Skyhook. So it feels like the vehicle is suspended from a hook in the sky and it's basically being oh. carried across. Um, what it actually uses are, is a further development of our CDC shock absorbers, so continuous damping control shock absorbers, with external valves for both uh, rebound and compression. Um, that then eliminates the, the small bumps in the road, so a poor road surface. Um, and it also has a pump 
also in each corner, so on each wheel, which can actively lift the wheel up or push it down accordingly. So this will help in, in with what we call low frequency um, uh, bumps in the road or also for going around corners. So if you're going around a corner, it'll push on the outside wheels to keep the vehicle stable and stop it leaning. Also, when you're heavily braking, it'll pump up the front wheels or the, the front axle so that you don't dive uh, when the vehicle brakes accordingly. But it also needs to take other things into consideration as well. If we talk about the driver, the driver setting the car, has the driver set the car to a sports mode? Do they want more feedback in the, in the steering and, and, and really want to understand the roads, road surface? Or have they set the vehicle to autonomous driving and want to completely decouple the chassis from the road? So those are completely different things. So the, the system yeah. needs to consider everything there. Richard. Is it not true that the suspension system today only reacts to inputs and forces once it comes into contact with them? Absolutely, and, and this is one of the things today, even though the systems are, are very advanced, um, they're really reacting. They're really reacting to the, to the bumps in the road. Uh, but ZF is working on something exactly called productive, predictive damping. So here we're using high definition cameras to really scan the road ahead and see where there are bumps in the road. The system then will uh, proactively set the damping accordingly to, to remove those bumps from the road or, or so the chassis doesn't uh, uh, act on those. Today, there are sensors on the front axle which pick up these bumps and then set the, set the damping force accordingly and use that as a preview for the rear axle. But with these cameras, we'll also have that preview for the front axle as well. So there are some great things to look forward to in the area of suspension technologies. Philip, can you give us an insight into the developments of linkage and steering? Yeah, absolutely, because what we have next is a system that we call Smart Chassis Control, and I would love to start the video where we can see how the system is working. Because what we have here is basically incorporated in the control arm ball joint, we have our sensor, which means in the old days we had like control arms and mechanics and everything, which was once you, and I'm having a workshop background, once you changed it, it was quite easy to forget that system. And what we have here is we have a fully integrated system where we can control, for example, the headlights. So we can really see how high is the car, how low is it, are the lights going up or down, what is my position exactly, and what comes additionally. I mean, we talked about higher weight. In this case, we have lower weight, so reducing up to 400 grams of weight in the unsprung mass, which is quite a lot. So from my point of view, one of my favorite technologies, to be honest, because we have the control arm with that integrated sensor um, so by one piece, so to say. Wow, so even simple components like ball joints are going digital. Yeah. What about developments or um, yeah, what about development and steering system? Richard, is there anything you can share with us? Yes, certainly. Well, uh, the steering system is going to have a complete makeover compared <laughs> to what uh, the systems that we know today. It'll have to continue to take into consideration a dynamic drive, of course, safety and comfort, but also a transition to autonomous driving. Um, let's have a look at a, a system called Easy Turn from ZF. <laughs> this system allows the front wheel axle uh, to turn at 80 degrees, where I think a, a conventional car would be, what, Philip, something like 40 to 45 degrees. Yeah. So here you can really see that the car can virtually turn in a spot. It's uh, in a single carriageway and also make parking much, much easier. So this is a system that is very useful, especially on small cars. Mm -hmm. That sounds good, Richard. Yes. But this solution seems to be good for smaller vehicles. Is there anything planned from ZF for larger vehicles? Well, funnily enough, yes, there is. Um, <laughs> we have a system called AKC. AKC, Active Kinematic Control. That's a rear axle steering. And let's listen to what Ingo Hermanza, our head of mechatronic chassis actuals, has to say about that. Yeah. AKC restoring system is really optimal for long wheel-based vehicles like luxury cars. The benefit of this system is really we can drive very dynamically through curves. We can change the lines on motorways very, very fast and also really giving a safety support on these roads. We 
urban city, so we really can park in very tight lots, um, to, so the turning circle is really reducing dramatically with the system. We are the only one who can give this benefit to our customers currently. We've already heard with this system improves safety, comfort and the driving dynamics. It can turn the rear axle uh, wheels up to 12 degrees to improve the steering. Um, we're already on seri in series production on the Mercedes S-Class with this, with this system. Um, and looking forwards, it's really, it's really going to help uh, in terms of tight spaces. Uh, you can have either a central actuator to move the wheels or dual actuators located on each wheel. They can turn in the same direction as the, as the front axle wheels, as we saw with the blue minivan in the video. Seems to be gliding around obstacles. That's at a, at a higher speed. You can turn them then in the opposite direction, which improves low speed maneuverability, as we saw with the large pickup. So this really helps getting into, into tight parking spaces. And it also helps with the trend to e-mobility, as we mentioned earlier, uh, to extend the range of the vehicles. They're putting larger batteries low down in the vehicle between the axles to improve the, the center of gravity. But as a consequence, it's pushing the axles apart, um, making then the wheelbase much longer and also a larger turning circle. So this system can help virtually then to shorten the wheelbase. It does seem clear that there are numerous developments on the way and that we clearly see the digitalization of Sashi products and the clear move to holistic systems. Philip, is there anything else you would like to share with us today? Absolutely. There is a system called Steer by Wire, which means basically the only connection between your steering rack and your steering wheel is digital. And that has the advantage that for example, we have less parts. We don't have the steering column, which takes a lot of space in case of accidents, for example, where it could be dangerous. So this is like a perfect part that we have. And imagine future driving autonomous, your steering wheel could just fold away, which is not possible if I have a steering rack or a steering column. So I think that's quite a good invention too. Richard, what does this actually mean for the driver? Well, yeah, very good question. I mean, at the end of the day, this system will help the driver because uh, when you're moving into a tight parking spot, those of us who don't, who aren't able to park into a tight parking space using the nice one-hand uh, action, uh, it'll help you, help you move into the spot, turning the wheel very slightly. It'll uh, transmit a variable signal to the wheels to enable them to turn lock to lock when you just move the wheel slightly. That, as a consequence, allows different shapes of steering wheel, as, we, as we've seen in the, in the video. So something like a yoke in a, from an aeroplane, um, which gives the, the driver also more space. And moving forwards as well, it'll allow what we call a dormant steering wheel. So when the vehicle is driving autonomously, the steering wheel will stay in the central position so as not to disturb the driver if they're working, for example. Um, and then moving forwards, exactly that, as you mentioned, Philip, a foldable steering wheel, so that will fold together, move into the dashboard, and give the, the person sitting in the driver's seat the same space as all the other passengers, so they can really benefit from autonomous driving. Mm, Philip, this is fantastic, and technologies are definitely evolving, and that is leading the way. What does this all mean for the workshops? I mean, there is always an amazing question, by the way. Um, what is the impact on the workshop of new technology. And in this case, we are changing, we are developing, we are literally putting cables on everything. And the idea is always, so to say, to stay tuned, to stay connected, to get the information, to know where or who do I have to contact. Um, to get my information, to get my knowledge. When we talk about raiders and leaders, how to adjust them, how to adjust them perfectly and correctly. And this all comes together basically with our training concepts, because there, for me, partnership is king. Because we see the world is changing and it will continue changing, and we just need to stay on the train and educate ourselves more and more. And how does ZF support and empower the workshops to answer to all these changes and new requirements? 
Well, basically, we start off with our workshop concept. So that means we have uh, like a ProTech membership, which means you can get an access to a hotline. You can have installation manuals, but also there is something that we call a ProTech Plus partnership, which is the advanced level, so to say, where you get access to a free or included two-day training, which means we train you two days on one specific topic where we really not only focus on our products, but on solving problems for the workshops. And this will end up in, we have an add-on, which is called ePower, where we qualify workshops to be really, really prepared for the future, as we discussed today, which is e-mobility, heavier vehicles, new technology. Everything is coming, and we just have to be aligned with the market as a workshop. And this is what we offer with those concepts. Thank you so much for the insights. And at the end, we prepared a special for yeah. you. We will have a movie. What's inside the movie, Richard? Well, it'll give us a full oversight of all the topics we've been talking about within Chassis 2.0, and hopefully then be a nice summary of what we've talked about. Yeah. That sounds perfect. Let's have a look. Whatever the mobility of the future looks like, one thing is for sure. The chassis will remain the basis of any vehicle, laying the foundation for driving dynamics, comfort, and safety. ZF is at the forefront of motion control for next generation mobility. Our in-depth knowledge of all aspects of the chassis is unmatched in today's market. As a top supplier to the global automotive industry, our products steer and brake, damp and stabilize millions and millions of vehicles around the world every day. ZF are not only experts of current chassis systems, we are already working intensively on tomorrow's solutions. Electrification, autonomous driving, and the software-defined vehicle will bring additional requirements for the chassis and even more possibilities. An electric vehicle, for example, with its higher weight and longer wheelbase, has new needs for advanced actuators, including leveling systems, rear axle steering, and enhanced roll control. Autonomous driving will raise the benchmark for comfort, allowing passengers to take advantage of their newfound freedom without being disturbed by a bumpy ride. It will also be a primary driver for the most advanced steer-by-wire or brake-by-wire systems. Last not least, the software-defined vehicle will open up tremendous opportunities. Utilizing ZF's high-performance computers, zone and domain controllers, as well as software platforms, unprecedented driving functions can be achieved. How to make the most out of all these different topics? ZF offers the full suite of intelligent components, modules, and X-by-wire systems, and are a leading supplier when it comes to electric drive lines. There is no other supplier in the mobility industry that has the full breadth and depth of braking, steering, and active suspension, with a long-standing expertise to integrate these technologies. Finally, our comprehensive software solutions, including Cubix, the most capable vehicle control software system globally, enable a perfect and holistic setup for software-defined vehicles. Using intelligent digital tools, ZF creates a new level of system performance, functionalities, and features. Our products even open up new business models for our partners. To achieve all this, ZF draws from our resources as a truly global organization, employing outstanding specialists in systems engineering, software development, and other functions. We shape future mobility through a spirit of innovation and relying on a stable yet agile organization and an outstanding corporate culture. Again, what will future mobility look like? Besides the continued importance of the chassis, there is one more thing for sure. ZF is in the pole position to shape the next level of chassis technology. The Chassis 2.0.